Hey guys, what's up? I'm back again today for another installment of Bleach Explained, wherein by I delve deeper into the major aspects of the Bleach universe and explain them in a streamlined format that is easy to digest for you guys. Today we're going to be talking about probably the most important and driving factor of the Bleach storyline, and that is going to be Soul Reapers. Soul Reapers are introduced in Bleach in literally the first episode, and the Soul Reapers of the Soul Society are the first major antagonists, then going on to become part of the main protagonists of the show, so there is a lot to cover here. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So I guess to start off, let's cover the name Soul Reaper, or as it's said in Japanese, Shinigami. Now if you speak Japanese or have watched Death Note, then you know that Shinigami directly translates to Death God or God of Death. They receive this designation as the primary objective of Soul Reapers is to oversee and regulate souls going through the process of transmigration, which is the cycle of death and rebirth. Soul Reapers are unearthly beings that reside in the Soul Society, which is a realm of the afterlife, and as such, they cannot be seen by living people that do not have spiritual awareness. Interesting tidbit, while in the Bleach series this realm is referred to as simply the Soul Society, it is actually the Eastern branch of the Soul Society, while the Western branch is shown in the Bleach spin-off movie Burn the Witch. But this isn't a Soul Society Explained video, we're explaining Soul Reapers. In essence, most Soul Reapers have the appearance of average humans, as they used to be human when they were alive. There are some exceptions to this, specifically Saji and Komamura, the captain of Squad 7 who is an anthropomorphic wolf. Additionally, Soul Reapers wear a shihakusho, which is a traditional black kimono with a white undergarment, denoting their status as Soul Reapers. So for as to how Soul Reapers come to exist, most of the souls that go to the Soul Society have very little spiritual power, meaning they can't sense the spiritual pressure of others. Soul Reapers are souls who have higher spiritual power, and therefore are given the option of becoming Soul Reapers by joining the Soul Reaper Academy. While it is more common for souls capable of becoming Soul Reapers to be born within the Serete, which is the richer, noble area, souls from the Rukangai, the common area, are also accepted if they meet the criteria. Interestingly, souls that have the potential to become Soul Reapers actually require food in order to sustain themselves, whereas normal souls don't need to eat. Because of this, of those who are spiritually aware, those that live in or come from the poorer districts of the Soul Society see becoming a Soul Reaper as a way to ensure their survival and escape poverty. So once a soul completes their training at the Soul Reaper Academy, which usually takes around six years, they join one of the branches of the Soul Society's military, which includes the Gotei 13, the Keto Corps, and the Stealth Force. Once officially becoming a Soul Reaper, there are three main duties that they are tasked to fulfill. The first is to send wandering souls called pluses in the world of the living to either either the Soul Society if they were good, or to Hell if they were evil. This is done through the execution of a Konso, or Soul Burial, in which the Soul Reaper presses the hilt of their Zanpakuto to the Soul's forehead. The second duty is to cleanse Hollows, which are pluses who have lost their sense of self after their deaths and transform into monsters. When a Soul Reaper kills a Hollow, they cleanse the soul of their sins and lead them into the Soul Society. However, this only applies to souls who were good in life. While a Soul Reaper is able to cleanse the sins of a soul since they became a Hollow, Hollows that committed grievous sins when they were human are still sent to hell when they are slain. The last duty of a Soul Reaper is the general governance of souls both within the Soul Society and the world of the living. They are responsible for maintaining the flow of spirits between the realms and making sure they are balanced. In essence, all soul-related jobs fall under a Soul Reaper's purview. Now while the power of a Soul Reaper can vary wildly, all Soul Reapers share similar biology and physiology. Soul Reapers age at a vastly slower rate than humans, with some like Retsu Unohana and Genryu Yamamoto being over a thousand years old. While Soul Reapers can be killed, it takes considerably greater injuries to permanently kill a Soul Reaper than it would a human. As a matter of fact, decapitation is the only 100% guaranteed method to kill a Soul Reaper. So going into their tools and methods, during their missions, Soul Reapers have access to a variety of tools that assist them in their duties, which I will list here. One of the most important ones is a Gigai, which is a temporary physical body that a Soul Reaper can inhabit, which allows them to physically interact with the world of the living. The next is a Hell Butterfly, which are used to lead Soul Reapers to the world of the living, as well as deliver messages. Soul Reapers that are going to the world of the living also receive a Denre Shinki, which is basically a spiritual cell phone that Soul Reapers use for communication, as well as keeping track of their kills. Some Soul Reapers also possess a Gokan Tenko, which is a glove that can be used to forcibly remove a Soul Reaper from their Gigai. An alternative method to this is the use of artificial souls, 
which take the form of candy and are also used for removing a Soul Reaper from a Gigai. There is also the King Kong Chinky, which is basically the Soul Reaper version of the Men in Black memory erasing device. And the most important tool for any Soul Reaper, their Zanpak Toe, which leads us into discussing the combat abilities of Soul Reapers. So during a Soul Reaper's combat training, they learn four principles of combat. These are Zanjutsu, which is sword fighting, Hakuda, which is unarmed fighting, Hoho, -ho, which is high speed movement techniques, and Kido, which are spells or arcane techniques. Kido is actually divided into three categories as well. Hado, which are destructive or offensive spells, Bakudo, which are binding, restrictive, or defensive spells, and Kaido, which are healing spells. Now despite all these different forms of combat that Soul Reapers learn, the majority of a Soul Reaper's power extends from their sword called a Zanpak Toe, or Soul Cutter, with a few exceptions like Kenpachi. Now, I could make a whole video explaining how Zanpak Toe work, and there's a lot to cover here, so I'm only going to hit the big aspects of Zanpak Toe. I'll save the smaller and more detailed stuff for a potential Zanpak Toe explained video. So, Zanpak Toe are the trademark weapons of the Soul Reapers, and are capable of cutting spiritual bodies. They were invented by the Soul Reaper Oetsu Nimaya of the Royal Guard, and Zanpak Toe all start off as generic swords called Asuchi. All Soul Reapers are issued Asuchi when they begin their training in the academy, and throughout their use and time spent with their Asuchi, they begin to imprint their soul within the blade, causing it to become a unique Zanpak Toe. A Soul Reaper Zanpak Toe is considered an extension of themselves, and are reflections of a Soul Reaper's powers and soul. This reflection is so intense that Zanpak Toe are actually sentient beings with their own personalities that reflect their owners and contain spirits that possess names. A Zanpak Toe's name also functions as a link between Soul Reaper and Zanpak Toe. Because of how unique Zanpak Toe are, their exact abilities and powers vary wildly among individual Soul Reapers. Despite this fact, all Zanpak Toe have multiple forms that are the results of compressing and sealing their powers. Most Soul Reapers intentionally carry their swords in their sealed forms and only release them when necessary. Most Zanpak Toe in their most basic form take the shape of a normal Japanese katana, though there are some exceptions with sealed Zanpak Toe taking the form of a Wakazashi, a Nodachi, or a Tanto. Now, all Zanpak Toe possess two stages of release, which function as direct upgrades to the sword by expanding the powers available to the Soul Reaper beyond simply functioning as a sword. The first release stage is known as Shikai, which can only be activated after a Soul Reaper learns the name of their Zanpak Toe. This can only happen if a Soul Reaper has established communication with their Zanpak Toe spirit. The Soul Reaper must also chant what is known as a Kaigo, or release call, in addition to the Zanpak Toe's name to go into Shikai form. In addition, every Zanpak Toe has a unique Kaigo. Achieving Shikai is a requirement for advancing in the Soul Reaper ranks and is usually a particular requirement of becoming a lieutenant, as it's an ability that most captains desire in their lieutenants. The second stage of release for a Zanpak Toe is called Bankai, one of the most iconic terms in Bleach. In order to achieve this level, a Soul Reaper must be able to materialize their Zanpak Toe spirit in the physical world and subjugate it in battle. Learning and achieving this process can take 10 or more years but once it's achieved, the Soul Reaper obtains Bankai, which usually drastically changes the appearance of a Zanpak Toe even more than the Shikai release does. However, even though Bankai is the final stage of the Zanpak Toe, the Zanpak Toe and Soul Reaper can continue to grow more powerful and evolve. Additionally, once Bankai is attained, a Soul Reaper can release their Shikai without calling out the name of their Zanpak Toe. Now, while the power and forms that the Shikai and Bankai releases take are dependent on the Soul Reaper and Zanpak Toe, the power of a Bankai is generally said to be around 5 to 10 times stronger than that of a Chikai. So to wrap up, I thought I would cover the branches of the Soul Society's military that is comprised of Soul Reapers. The primary branch is the Gote 13, or 13 Court Guard Squads. This division consists of 13 numbered squads who are all led by Captain Class Soul Reapers, with the Captain Commander, or Head Captain, being the Captain of Squad 1. Some of the squads have certain specialties, like Squad 4 being a Medic-based squad, and Squad 11 being the main Vanguard Combat Squad. While all squads are a part of the same branch of the military, the Gote 13 don't usually function as a single cohesive unit. The command and operation of a squad is usually left to the discretion of that squad's captain. The primary duty of the Gote 13 is to defend the Sedete. 
but squads are also allocated districts within the Rukangai to defend as well. The next and second largest branch of the military is the Onmitsukido, or Stealth Force. While this is considered a separate branch of the military, the branch is also tied to Squad 2 of the Gote 13, with the captain of Squad 2 being the commander-in-chief of the Stealth Force. The main duties of the Stealth Force are execution, assassination, and the supervision of criminals. They are also heavily involved with intel gathering, scouting, and surveillance of enemy territory. So while the Gote 13 can be considered an external guard, the Stealth Force can be considered an internal guard, keeping track of and watching out for threats within the Serete. The last of the three main branches is the Kido Corps, which is comprised of a group of Soul Reapers that are specialized in the use of Kido. They are recruited from the Soul Reaper Academy from amongst those trainees that show a particular talent for Kido. The primary purpose of the Kido Corps is the management of barriers and seals, including the Senkaimon, which is the portal Soul Reapers use to travel to and from the world of the living. Lastly, there is another division known as the Royal Guard, or the Zero Squad. They are Soul Reapers who have been chosen to guard the Soul King, the ruler of the Soul Society, as well as the Royal family. They reside within the Soul King's palace, which is a separate dimension above the Soul Society. Because they are directly tied to the Soul King, the authority of the Royal Guard supersedes the authority of anyone within the Soul Society. Despite this, they usually do not interfere with the affairs of the Soul Society, and since they serve the Royal Family, they do not usually contribute in the defense of the Soul Society either. The Royal Guard has no soldiers, and only consists of five ex-captains of the Gote 13, who were promoted to Royal Guard status. Their combined power is said to be far above that of even all of the Gote 13 put together. And so guys, that covers almost all of the basics of Soul Reapers, what they are, what they do, and how they fight. There was a lot to cover here, and like I said, I only really hit the big general topics, so if I missed any of the smaller stuff, maybe I will flesh that out in later videos. So guys, if you made it here, I want to thank you for watching all the way to the end of the video. Please leave in the comment section the next Bleach topic you want a video on. I would love to make more of these. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, please hit that like button on your way out. And if you aren't already, please subscribe to the channel. It'll let you know when I post in the future, and it also helps me out more than you know. With that being said, guys, one more time, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.